The session actually is, uh, is, is meant to be a companion to the pre-lunch sessions. This is our postprandial session uh, on, regarding trials, uh, nutrition, comprehensive nutrition trials. It's entitled the International Lifestyle Portfolio Trial a Planning Discussion. And it's a topic very near and dear to our heart because this is uh, something that's occupied a lot of our time over the last couple of years, the fundraising part anyway. I, I think we've got a pretty good idea and a pretty good, we've designed a pretty good concept in terms of a trial. Uh, but we wanted to get feedback. So with the uh, discussion we had this morning, we wanted to continue this uh, here with uh, David will present, uh, David Jenkins, who needs no introduction, um, the, uh, our, really our rationale and design for this trial. And then we hope to have a very productive discussion uh, that uh, builds on what we had this morning. So without any further ado, uh, David, please, the podium is yours. I'm glad that uh, we've, we've got the, the, the congregation that I've got because for some time we thought, we, we've been thinking for probably about 10 years or so that we ought to uh, get into the large scale clinical trial business. But I don't have to say, and fortunately we've got Ed here and we've got Mike Faku here who can both attest to the sort of cost uh, and the sort of problems of raising money to get one of these sorts of trials going. But we felt we'd had all the ideas, we'd put together all the pieces that you need to put into a high impact dietary trial over the years, and yet we'd never done anything but small trivial trials that um, tend to get brushed under the, under the mat. Um, and we really needed to do a large trial, a large outcome trial, because those really are where um, the impact comes with anything that one's doing. So I think I have to... I'm sorry, I haven't done what I should have done. I've just got a load of conflicts of interest that you can read through. This is my life's history of conflicts of interest. I haven't shortened them to the last five years or what's relevant. But they're all various companies that I've worked with and people who've helped us along the way and I've consulted for. Um, and that's really where, where we get to. Uh, how do I mitigate this? Well, by just speaking to you, hopefully, you'll be able to see through me as being transparent. Um, and if you can't, please come up and tell me why. Uh, so our aim is really to maximize CVD risk reduction by lifestyle change. I think that's that's the that's been the goal. Whoops, I'm going back. Um, and we thought we'd do it by a, 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 a multitude of things, diet and exercise as, as being the components. We thought we'd have a dietary portfolio which would take in the nuts, but also take in fiber um, and other things. We'd have the monounsaturated fat, the olive or canola oils, and we'd have low glycemic index foods, which interestingly, a low glycemic index, low glycemic low diet was part of, um, part of the uh, PREDIMED study too. And with exercise, uh, we're taking our Laval colleague, uh, JP Dupre, uh, taking their, their, the Laval portion, so it's a Toronto-Laval combination, increased physical activity, less sedentary behavior, um, as Ed, Ed pointed out, the 10,000 steps a day, and then increased structure, structured, it should, rather than structural, that should be structured exercise in addition to that. So it would be a somewhat more um, vigorous uh, approach. But you'll note that it is, does not focus anywhere here on weight loss. We are not trying to induce weight loss in this study. If it happens, it will happen due to the exercise and the diet. It will not be... Uh, the, the goal. Um, the dietary portfolio would, would have the nuts, as we've said. It has the viscous fiber. It has vegetable protein, soy, and legumes of various kinds. And it has plant sterols uh, and rich margarine, uh, which would give an extra boost to the cholesterol lowering. 
with this sort of a diet, we've been able to, under metabolic conditions, uh, reduce uh, the LDL cholesterol um, over about a four-week period to the same extent as lovastatin uh, by comparison with a control. Um, and in the longer term, uh, we've been able to, over a six-month period with the same diet, independent of the intensity of the intervention, we've been able to reduce by about 15% um, ad libitum, where people select their own diets. So um, the olive oil um, and the nuts, we needn't uh, say any more about. Uh, the PREDIMED study, certainly in terms of cardiovascular disease, largely the stroke, interestingly, um, uh, showed their 30% reduction. So that's just a component of what we're going to be using. Um, the low glycemic index foods, things like steel cut oils, bulgur, barley, pasta, parboiled rice, lentils, legumes, uh, traditional um, uh, breads, pumpernickel bread, uh, temperate climate fruit. Uh, those are the sorts of things that will be encouraged. Um, Arash, who's here, um, uh, did a meta-analysis of uh, glycemic load on CHD risk. Uh, the overall analysis, certainly with the most recent studies, positive, largely driven by the ladies. But as we've heard from Jeff, uh, men also, if one does an analysis, uh, also have an effect, perhaps not as clearly shown. Um, ACOBOS is a good model, we feel, for low glycemic index diets because ACOBOS itself converts the diet um, into a low glycemic index diet. And uh, uh, Jean-Louis Cherson's um, approach in the stop NIDM trial, again, showed uh, uh, almost 50% reduction in CVD events in this relatively small study, um, but nevertheless showed the effects, I think, in, uh, in those who were, as it were, pre-diabetic. So, um, and uh, in terms of, of weight reduction, uh, the Laval exercise program, without any emphasis on weight reduction over a one-year uh, one period, showed reductions both in body weight and, uh, and waste. So um, I think that... Um, that's, uh, that's a, a good profile for a study. So we thought it would always have to be, we've had discussions about participants. What participants do you actually enroll? Who are your participants? Are they the, uh, the enlightened who just wish to join a study? And this is always the problem. So you've just got enthusiasts with no sort of general application to the population. That's probably going to be the case. I think one has to have enthusiastic people, and that really is the problem. Um, but then you have to wonder what do... What, it's a problem if you don't have enthusiastic people. I think everyone laughs at that too, because that's even worse. Uh, you don't have anyone going to the end of the study. Um, so we have to have enthusiastic people, uh, unfortunately. And the majority of people who come in look at you in the clinic and ask whether they have to do anything or whether you can give them a pill that will help to take everything away. Um, so the enthusiasm is not necessarily there. But and So we can say we're going to cater for a small portion of the population. But nevertheless, you then have to, and I, I think with Mike Farker we've been discussing in, in quite some detail, who should our participants actually be? Um, and there's the debate of should you take people at the low risk range, which, which I think... Um, I think we've got uh, good evidence that that would be, would be nice. And um, I think Ed made a very good point there. The problem is that if you take them at the low risk, then you've got a power problem because your event rates are not going to be high. So you're, 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 you either take them at high risk and you have a small study that doesn't, doesn't last until all the investigators are dead um, because it doesn't have to run that long. Um, or you take a study which is low risk uh, and you hand it on to the next generation um, and uh, you, you wait and you have large numbers. So it's also very costly. So which do we do? It's a problem. I mean, it's a, it's a problem that we don't really, we're not resolved easily because I, I think this is one of the big sort of in, inseparable problems. 
So, I mean, just take a stab. Let's just suggest that we have people, um, men over 50, ladies over, gentlemen over 50, ladies over 60, BMIs 25 to 40. This is almost this is sort of a very standard group. And then basically at least one of the following, either people with type 2 diabetes and, um, and, and, and three other risk factors, or uh, non-people who are post-MI, um, uh, not post-cabbage, because uh, I think we'd be warned about that. Uh, where they can have a stent, but not a cabbage, because I think that, um, that Mike's shown that very nicely in, in his studies, that um, that would be a group who are fairly low risk. Um, and, and, and those with a framing risk or over 20, um, and those who are statin intolerant and not willing to take statins, there's a, there, there are an increasing number of people who uh, turn up in the clinics who don't wish to take statins, get severe muscle pains, these sort of things. So um, those may be part of the group. So, I mean, there, there are some ideas for discussion. I don't really want to, um, to go into that in too much detail because I want to just go quickly through what the protocol would be. Um, the pro we, we have a Vanguard study already funded for a couple of hundred volunteers. Basically, um, we've got our selection. We've got probably a, 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 a period of recruitment. Uh, we have a run-in period. I wish it was a three-month period of a recruitment period here. But a run-in period, we thought, was important in this study just to take out those who are, who are not going to be that enthusiastic. I think one has to do that. Um, and then we've shown three years the sort of measurements that we're making. Uh, probably um, four times a year uh, during the first, probably throughout, we'll be doing four times a year would be the, the sort of clinic visit times, uh, which would also be education times and inspirational times, if you like, uh, with exercise, treadmill exercise testing uh, at the end of each year. This would go on for the entire period of the study. We've just shown the first three years here. Um, uh, basically, uh, looking at a, the dietary portfolio plus exercise versus basically the standard of care, which I, I think in, in, in general terms would be classed as a DASH-type diet, would be the, the, the sort of standard of care that we would uh, be thinking of. Um, these are some of the characteristics We've assumed, and this is, I think, we've assumed a 2% event rate. Um, and it looks as if that could be down as low as 1% even um, if we're uh, to look at how things are going. And I think that's, many years ago, that was the concern that um, Herzl had, that to get a 2% event rate in your control group is, uh, is pretty tough nowadays. So... That's probably an overestimation. Um, so basically, our power would be 90 um, as a ratio of 0.8. Um, recruitment, we thought, over two years. The treatment period, nine years. The duration of the study would be 12 years, so not, not terribly different. Um, and the anticipated the event rate would be 8 860 for about 6,000 again, which seems to be the sort of magic minimum number that is a minimum number uh, that one can use. Again, I think these things are fluid, and I'm not quite sure that um, we're sure about the, the, du the duration in this situation. I think what we, what, what we felt, and I think John feels very strongly about this too, is that we need to encourage people by giving them foods of various kinds. In other words, it's not just good enough to, to see them and talk to them and be nice to them. You have to actually induce them. So we certainly have to provide them with foods. Uh, we have to provide them with oils, nuts, um, peanuts, I think. We're, we're in Cyril has uh, fixed us with peanuts, I think. Not a, not a nut, but a legume. So it, it covers both sides. Looks, it's a a bean that looks tastes like a nut, um, so it's a sort of it's, it's does both things, um, 
and um, we would probably make sure that we had a bread baked on both sides, so we would have an oat, oat bran high fiber, sort of psyllium oat fiber bread uh, versus a whole wheat bread, and that would be given to both sides. We'd have to give some things to both sides, and perhaps we'd have some low-fat dairy um, for the, the control side. Um, and then the usual uh, paraphernalia, if we can get uh, Nike to give us running shoes or whatever, and uh, these sorts of things, I think, um, and sweatshirts for the uh, control, uh, together with obviously pedometers or, or uh, accelerometers for the test group um, and not for the control. I think those would be the, both, both the toys and the things that would encourage them, hopefully to do the sort of things we want. So that's, those are the sort of, those are ideas we've yet to, um, to actually. Our outcomes would be, would be um, uh, major, um, major cardiovascular events. Um, basically, the primary outcome uh, would be fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular events, uh, myocardial infarction, stroke, cardiovascular death, sudden death. Um, and events. That's, that's the main thing, and a, and, and a raft of secondary and tertiary outcomes. Um, and I think that's, that's really the bottom line, isn't it? Um, and um, decides where you go. All this is so much hot air unless you can, can uh, fund. And I have to say, we in Canada, just so that you can, you can have the, the picture, are in a particularly difficult spot because our, our national agency of health has decided to can its clinical trials committee. So we do not have a clinical trials committee to do these sorts of things. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's bad, bad news. In fact, we have a complete revision of our approach for getting funds and to get what we call a uh, foundation grant now you have probably three particular hurdles to go through a step one a step two and a budget step and it takes a year just to submit your grants um, and then another two years so we're, we're in in the doldrums I think um, in terms of where we budget and it is with that bottom line that I want to leave you I don't know what the look ahead, probably I can be given what the look ahead was, but there are some who say that it was uh, uh, 250, but, and going, and going. So with that, um, I didn't want to take too much time because I, I need, we, need, we need help, um, and we need ideas. But, um, and we'll certainly be coming to you all for collaboration, as you know. We've probably approached many of you already. Um, but uh, this is our, 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 our problem. Thank you.